Okay, um, good morning everybody. I, I feel I should share this because um, I feel God is so good and his saving grace is just amazing. Um, <clears throat> Any had a birthday party on Tuesday and um, I tried to order her a cake here. The person that normally makes us cake couldn't make it. So I ordered a cake all the way from London. <laughs> um, so I went to London to pick the cake up. I will say, if it's not for the grace of God and for his saving grace, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here to say this right now. So I went to pick cake, and just coming off the M25 on Junction 21A, the road was a bit wet. Somebody decided to just drive in straight in front as I turned into the lane to, to exit. I tried to brake, and my brakes wouldn't stop. And I looked at the car in front. If I hit that car, I'll be smashing into We'll just keep going, and it will be a pile up. And, um, if I turn left, I would just go into the, um, the barrier. So I kind of like, Lord, please help me, and just switch my hand to the right lane. And as you know, M25, the right lane, people are still going straight forward and in full speed as well. But you know what? God was so good. It's like he stopped the oncoming traffic as I turned into that lane. And I came to a stop, you know, just totally stop, not just going slow on that lane, on the right lane. I stopped and I took a deep breath and I said, Lord, thank you that I didn't smash into that. At that time, I looked back to make sure I'm not actually in somebody's way that he stopped waiting for me. There was no car behind me, but then I saw a trailer coming full speed from behind. <laughs> the car behind, you know, on the other lane had stopped for me to go in, so I went in, and then the trailer sped past. And I left, you know, as I was driving home, just praising God in realization that, you know, if it was not for his grace, <laughs> You know how small my car is. <laughs> if a trailer goes over my car, I will be sandwiched, you know. Nothing will be picked up. So I just want to say thank you to God. And I want you if, you, if you don't even have nothing to praise God for, today being the last Sunday of December, praise God for me because I'm here. Thank you. God is good all the time. And we're very glad to see you here this morning, Betty. Let's just pray. I just feel we should pray. Father God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you are consistent, Lord. And we thank you that by your grace, Betty was saved this week, Lord. And for all of us, where we see you at work in our lives, Lord, we thank you. This last Sunday of the year, Lord, we look back and we thank you for the highs, the lows, Lord. We thank you for all of it. We thank you that you love us no matter where we are this morning. And Lord, we just pray that you will open our hearts and minds to hear your word this morning, that you will speak to us afresh from your word and that we will be changed and renewed through it. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to ask Diane to come up and read for us, followed by Lo. wasn't for hearing aids, this would not be anywhere near me. I don't need it. <laughs> Psalm 117 on page 616 of the, of the Pew Bibles. It's the most difficult psalm to read. 
It's so long and weary and sad. Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Sorry. The second reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through to 34, page 971 of your church Bible, 971, and I will be reading from NIV, New International Version. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It's not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap, or store away in barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon, in all his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow, is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. So Vicky's going to be sharing with us this morning. I'm just going to pray for Vicky, if that's all right. Father God, we thank you for Vicky, and we thank you for the gift of your word. And Lord, we pray that you will use her, that you will anoint her words to us this morning, that we will hear afresh from you, and that you will be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, it works. Um, as you many of you know... Um, I don't get very nervous very easily, but I'm absolutely petrified right now. So it's all good, but I'm doing it in um, the power of God and not in my own strength. So I think that's always good, isn't it? Um, right. Okay, so what are the one things that we've been thinking about over the last couple of weeks that we've probably been worried about or concerned about? Oh, I need some interaction from you guys, by the way. So what, what have you been worried about in the last couple of weeks? Christmas, deliveries turning up, what else? Of, of what, what have we been looking forward to the last couple of weeks? Christmas and what do we get at Christmas? Presents, exactly. So we have just gone past this last season, uh, looking and blessing people with presents. And it, it does say it is blessed to give than receive. But I'm sure all of us were, were definitely looking forward to opening the Christmas presents this year. Through human history, this is one of the signs that we give to show someone that we love them. And I absolutely love giving gifts to people, and uh, even if it's not like an actual gift, I love just saying, you're so good at this and stuff, because it just brightens them up, and it does definitely um, shows you, uh, shows them that, they, that, that you love them. 
So I just want you to turn to each other now, and I just want you to tell each other what is the best gift you've ever been given. And I know my mum's answer, because that's me. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but turn to one another and just tell each other what is the best gift that you've ever been given. my mum <laughs> okay just sh put your hands up just let me know what your favourite gift is couple of people hands up please yes what was your favourite gift a, a segue is that one of those things that have you fallen off of it yet oh gosh anyone else favorite? oh gosh yes Rochelle holy spirit fantastic anyone else oh Brent what did you get Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> what about over here? <laughs> Anyone over here? Best gift? Anyone? Mark? Best gift you've ever met? Michelle. Beautiful. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> so as a church, we're going through this new season, this new year, because it is the last Sunday, like Betty said, of December. Um, so as, the, as we're going through these exciting things uh, that are going to be happening, one big thing for the church is that we're getting our vicar. Glyn's coming, and that's going to be really exciting for us. Um, in my life, I'm looking forward to another year working at Azalea. I've worked there now for a year, which is absolutely crazy. So I'm looking forward to a new year of probably going into the council and kicking some bum um, and showing them that actually our women are worth something and not worth nothing. Um, but today, I thought we'd talk about the gift of the kingdom. The generosity of God is summed up in a passage that many of us know, and it's John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave. There is something in God's heart that he can't wait to give you or us. He loves to give us things. He loves to give us gifts. He loves to give us blessings. He is so generous, he wants to give us so much. In Mark 1, 14 to 15, it states, The time has come, the kingdom of God is near, repent and believe the good news. Isn't that amazing? I, I just love reading that. When I'm, I'm a bit not knowing what to read in the Bible, that is often, I always just go into that and I just think, yeah, the time has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Kingdom of faith are two few steps of us, a few steps in the kingdom of God. So what is repentance? What is repentance? Turning away from God? No. Turning away from sins and stuff like that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so it's turning our back on the sins and looking towards God. So who are we meant to be in faith? Who are we meant to have faith in? God, Jesus. And what in Jesus? Jesus even said to Satan that he is the son of God. So what do we believe in? What does faith mean to us? Faith is an active word. It's not about the thought that Jesus is the son because we know that is true. But it makes us walk and live in the power of who he is and what he has done for us. That he died for our sins so we can be forgiven. So with these two amazing things, we get sorts, all sorts of amazing gifts. When we step into repentance and say sorry, and I was, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I went to see someone and, and he said, so just imagine a line, this, like when we go onto the beach, this line, and you just step over it because that's gone. Once you've said sorry, that's gone. God's taken it from you and he's removed it and taken it away. It's not yours anymore. So when we step into repentance and say sorry and begin to work in God and believe in the power of who he is, we get some amazing gifts. We get the gift of a fresh start. And I think that's amazing that we get a fresh start, that he gives us a clean slate. I teach and talk to my, to my women, the women at Azalea, all the time about repentance. These women commit sin on a daily basis, and they are aware of that. 
some of them even know that they're committing the sin and some of them don't have that relationship with Jesus yet but when they come in again and say to me Vicky I've used again I've you know I was clean for three weeks I was clean for four weeks or oh Vicky I've done this wrong I've done that wrong I feel so angry I feel so upset with myself I've let you down I've let me down and I've let God down it's then that I explain to them that if we have the faith in God, faith in God that died on the cross for our sins so that we can be forgiven, that we turn away to God and say, look, mate, I've done wrong. I'm sorry. Help me. We are given a fresh start. We have this new clean slate. When I was on DTS uh, Gosh, it was well over a year ago. Wow. Um, while I was there, I had some strongholds over my life, and one of them was shame. And it was a real, real entwined stronghold that was really knit, like knitted into me, and it really needed to be broken. Um, and this person came up to me and said, Vicky, I, I can see a picture. I've got this picture for you. And imagine you as a picture um, in a frame. So you've got the, the actual photograph, and then you've got the glass, and then the frame. And um, they said to me, at the moment, you've had loads of like rubbish, poo, slapped all over it, pen mark and everything, and you can't see your face. Um, but I was that beautiful picture on the, on the other side. And uh, through my life, like I said, I've had this poo and muck thrown at me. So I felt a bit shameless. I've had the hopelessness. But between that, we've got that pane of glass. And that represents God between us. And when I came to God and I said, look, look, I, I just, I'm really sorry that I felt that about myself. I'm really sorry that actually I've got this over my life and it isn't mine and it's not that something that you've created me to be. The glass frame, like I said, represents God. When I've asked God to, to come and repair me and heal me and stuff like that, God's hand sort of thing just wipes it clean, completely and utterly clean. And then I became this amazing picture again. And I think that some of us may, may feel that as well, that we feel a bit sort of like dirty or we've got this thing hanging over us or something. And we just need to turn to God and say, God, I ask you just to help me, give me a fresh cart, start clean sleigh, and God will just wipe away that, wipe away it clean and give you a brand new, fresh start, fresh, clean photo. The old is gone and the new is here. A fresh start a new creation. All these promises God gives us are not just for the future, but they're for the here and they're for now. And they're to here to last to the end of eternity. But there is more. I can't believe it, isn't it? It's absolutely amazing. There is more. If, in that, if that isn't amazing enough, one of Jesus' favorite talks is the Sermon on the Mount. He asks and answers all the common questions that we ask on a daily basis. And as Lowe said when he was reading his things about, you know, the do not worry. And many of you know, I know Lee knows, Michelle knows, a lot of people know. I have a huge thing about worry. I worry about everything and anything. And I'm like, well, what about this? And what about that? And I remember people just saying to me, just read that. Just read it and learn it and know it and believe in it. So like I said, he asks and answers all the common questions that we have on a daily basis. The concerns of if we live or if we die, if we're going to have food or if we're not going to have food, if we can have clothes or we're not going to have clothes. And I've thought about all these things, and I'm sure many of you have thought about some other things as well. But worrying is not living, and I learned that the hard way. Worrying is definitely not living, it's surviving. And I don't want to survive, I want to live. Jesus came to us to make our lives live to the max. Absolute fullness of life. So about talking about these worries that people have, Jesus gives us the answers. It's the gift of the kingdom. He said, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Jesus answers all of life's worries, all of life's concerns, to seek his first, his kingdom, and then his righteousness, and all things will be given to you. In other words, 
Vicky's language, not Latin malarkey. You don't need to worry if he is your greatest priority. So why? Because everything else gets put into the, into the right place it's meant to be. Everything else finds its right order. It works things out. I just love that. But God is just able to work things out for us. He just puts it. And I, and I sort of get, just get this picture. You know, the kids have those things that they put those triangles and stars and they have to put in the right places and they don't go in the right sort of the circle can't go in the square place and the star can't go in the circle place God's like that God puts us in the right places and stuff like that I remember um, when I when I finished my DTS and thinking okay I'm actually gonna have to put my faith in God I'm actually gonna have to put my worries and my concerns and I'm gonna have to put them aside thinking to myself actually oh gosh how am I going to have enough money to pay for my car how am I going to have enough money to do this am I going to be able to do that is are we going to be able to pay our rent da, 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 all this business but I remember being taught about seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness and all things will be provided Jesus is always answers us when we ask things he might not answer it straight away but he will definitely uh, uh, you know answer it I began to trust God because I would say, look, mate, you have told me I need to do this, so I need you to help me and provide for me. And I remember someone telling me about who was also a missionary and, and was saying, look, God, I'm putting my trust in you. If you don't provide this money, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't say to people that God's so amazing. You need to do this for me. But he did. It worked. Yeah, I don't have a huge monthly support. And some months, yeah, I do struggle. But there has never, ever, ever been a month that we've gone without. Yeah, I might have like 20 quid in my, you know, my hand and think, oh my gosh, I've got to pay for 30 pounds worth of something. But somehow, whatever I'm going to get is only 20 pounds. God stretches things so well. Can I have an amen? amen. Absolutely. <laughs> He stretches what needs to be stretched. So we don't need to worry about these things. And I am just going to put an exclaimer out here. I'm not preaching at you, and please don't think I am. I'm actually talking to myself in this as well. I'm teaching myself what I'm, I've gotten here as well. We don't need to worry about these things if we seek his kingdom and his righteousness. God has a plan for us in the kingdom that we seek. We don't just seek him and say, God, you're so amazing, thank you, but there is work to be done. But there is work to be done. He takes an ordinary life and makes it extraordinary. Someone told me a story one, one time and about a lady who worked in one of those big American supermarkets like Costco. The difference with this lady is that she was a Christian, she had a relationship with God. She would go and talk at our church's youth group and about intercession and about life that's not in America. But do you know how many countries this woman went to to spread the good news? 38. God took this ordinary lady in a supermarket on a supermarket wage and made her life extraordinary by sending her to 38 different countries to spread the gospel. He can take an ordinary life in this place and make it extraordinary. When we seek his kingdom and his righteousness, we don't just have to survive, we can thrive. I thought it was a bit funny. So I think we need to learn, just going into this new season, to seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all things will be given to you as well. I just want to share something that some of you may have seen on Facebook. Um, I worked Christmas Day at Azalea at our drop-in centre, and it was absolutely an amazing night. Um, we encountered um, a few women, and they were really sort of shocked that we were there. Um, and they all thought I was pregnant because of my stomach being so big from the dinner I had. Um, <laughs> 
but that's fine. So I just said I was just told that I was the new Mary. Um, <laughs> um, right, let me have a look. Right, okay. <laughs> okay, just bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Right. So this is one of the women that I support, um, and her uh, Susan name is Ellie. Um, so when I was first invited to come along to this drop-in that was run by local Christian ladies, I thought it would be a bit of a Bible-bashing place full of goody-goody two-shoes who, who needed validation to fulfill their own hearts. Isn't that truth or what? God, blimey. How wrong was I? Once I started allowing people in, I started to feel comfortable. I'd always followed the Christian way with my values and morals, but unfortunately, I lost my way and only belief and any belief I felt before I started losing friends and family. My life had hit a critical turning point and I was scared and I was harming myself with all the drugs I was using and taking chances to get the money to finance it. Then one night at the drop in things seemed a bit different. See, things seemed to drop into place. And for the first time in years I felt free. Free enough to feel love and gratitude. Thanks for the help and belief that you have all given me. Not only did you wake up my spiritual side, you fed me and encouraged me to push through my illness and pray for help. Today, I've been provided with strength to deal with a new start. Isn't that amazing? We got this Christmas day and we were like, I was bawling. I was like, oh, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> but it's just amazing how God can take an ordinary woman who has got a drug addiction has got so much illness going on and has said, you know, it's a fresh start for you. So I'm just going to end in prayer um, and I just thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to preach today and, and all that. Yeah, so dear Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for our sins and I pray that each and every one of us seeks your kingdom when we're going through a bumpy road that we learn to turn to you straight away when we're going through things that gets tough. Thank you, God, that we are with, that you are with us no matter where we are. Thank you, God, that you are a loving, caring, grateful, providing God. In Jesus' name, amen.